Thank you very much. I know it's um, a disappointment, and Chris was very sorry that he could not be here this morning. I just want to say I am the British ambassador here in Mexico, and I have the pleasure of heading up a team which actually has a very special relationship with civil society in Mexico. And one of the things relevant to COP is that with the World Wildlife Fund, we have been responsible for bringing a big civil society dialogue into the national vision for RED that President Calderon, I believe, is announcing tomorrow or later this week. So it's a great privilege to be here this morning. And Chris has asked me very much to communicate to you um, his views. Various speakers before, I think, have spoken about this being one of the thorniest, but one of the most important parts of the work that's going on in Cancun this week. And I would just like to echo this. Clearly, the proper financing of climate change, adaptation, and mitigation going forward in the pursuit, obviously, of overall reducing the vulnerability of some of the most vulnerable parts of the world and some of the poorest is a clear, clear priority. Chris Hewn wanted to speak to you today about the new Green Fund and obviously our hope that that will be launched here in Cancun. He also wanted to set out for you, I think, some of the sort of context of that fund and in particular to set out a few thoughts on the UK vision and the UK views and ambition. And I should say that I'm joined on the panel today by Matthew Wyatt from our DFID, our Department for Development, head of our climate and environment team. And I hope between us we can field the questions I'm sure you'll have. But basically from the UK position, obviously one of the contexts and one of the important things in our minds has been the recently announced outcome of the UK government spending review. Why? Because this provided for us a UK budget of some 2.9 billion pounds, 4.7 billion US dollars, for international climate finance for the next four years, taking that contribution from the UK government through to 2015. And I'm really pleased to say that that review um, established the UK as the first donor to make a medium-term commitment to ch climate change financing. And it also had the welcome effect of ensuring that our commitment to fast start financing is now fully funded and fully budgeted for. It's no longer just a pledge, and some 500 million of it is already allocated and out there. It also, the spending review, provides us with a credible and a strong platform to push ahead with other countries to mobilize the $100 billion in public and private international finance that we need annually by 2020. And it's in that context, of course, that we are looking at the Green Fund. The British government absolutely accepts and is pushing for the urgent need for international mechanisms with the credibility and the legitimacy to be able to channel and disperse large amounts of finance, larger than we've ever seen before in the climate world, to developing countries and to help them deliver the low carbon, climate resilient growth that they need, indeed that the whole world needs in the future. And if this new fund is really effective, we, the British government, will want to contribute a great deal of our finance to it and to motivate the private sector to devote the very needed resources from them. So the United Kingdom has a strong incentive here in Cancun to seek a strong and clear outcome on the Green Fund. That outcome needs to be seen within a balanced package, of course, but it's not a negotiating chip. We have to take its design very seriously. It's absolutely fundamental and important to our climate change ambitions. So what should that outcome on the fund include? Chris Hewn's priority is to secure three key elements. Firstly, we want it to have a formal connection to the UNFCC that ensures the fund can follow the COP's guidance while also functioning independently. This will be the first fund ever to be accountable only 
to the UNFCC's COP, we've got to make it workable as well. Secondly, we do indeed want it to have a strong, balanced board with equal representation of contributors and recipients. And I very much pick up Tim Gore's point. Developing the developing country voice is crucial. It has to be there. Thirdly, we want it to have simplified procedures for accessing climate finance based on country-owned plans. That again is very, very important. And with those three elements, we think we will be able to launch and design a green fund that has enormous potential. And in thinking and illustrating what we mean by potential, when the Global Fund for AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria, which the United Kingdom was involved in designing, was founded in 2002, we had no idea that it would end up as a fully-fledged, independent, international institution with some US dollars 19.3 billion committed to it, including some very innovative sources of finance and working in 144 countries with developing countries, NGOs and civil society as major partners in decision-making. This scale of ambition and possibly higher given the scale of the climate change problem is the scale that we think we need to bear in mind as we proceed in these negotiations. This scale will mean making hard choices, yes, and in some cases bringing in concepts that are perhaps unfamiliar to the UNFCC. For example, we think we will need to ask the World Bank to act as the fund's trustee, its banker, and those designing the fund will need, we think, to have the expertise to ensure it can leverage and stimulate private finance. We think we will probably need to outsource that expertise to finance and development ministries, but this should be and will be, we hope, in the ultimate interest of developing countries, who often rely on the private sector to enable the poorest in society and to help create their wealth. But these are hard choices, but they will be rewarding hard choices. Designing the fund to distribute scaled up finance equitably, where it's needed most, that really has to be our goal. Some of the points that the previous speakers have made, yes, we do believe adaptation is very, very important. The UK certainly in our fast start financing, are allocating at least 50% to adaptation. And we believe that the longer term financing as well must make a significant contribution to those who most need it, who are most vulnerable. And yes, how could I not back gender, um, important considerations of gender? And I'm delighted that we have a Mozambican fin a minister here this morning who represents some of the gender balance that we need. That has been a central tenet of our policies of our Department for Development, and we do have a program for climate change and gender. So we are very supportive on those points. I think this is an important issue. I think we are all agreed on that. I think it is a great opportunity to hear the civil society views and welcome very much your statement today. And let's get on with the doing of it and the more difficult negotiations. Thank you.